Where do I start? Uh, Miles, uh, we talked about this about, I don't know, it seems like about a year ago now, and I thought, I got plenty of time to write a speech. And then as I was driving up here, I thought, I'm running out of time. <laughs> <laughs> but I just want to start out uh, by saying it's, it's an honor, Miles, that, that you selected me to give this speech. Uh, to say a few words about why you deserve to be a member of the Urbana University Hall of Fame. I've known Miles for, uh, I believe, 20, 25 years now. Um, but it feels like just a short time ago that uh, we were in high school and he convinced me to go out and play uh, golf for uh, the London High School team. I said, shortly after that, it was, uh, we were addicted to golf. We both worked at the London Country Club. And after work, we'd uh, go home, clean up, and uh, we'd be out there. Most of the members out there were gone by then. And Miles and I would play 36 holes, and uh, no one will believe it, but we played 36 holes in about an hour and a half. Uh, so I, I thank Miles for that. The tutelage you gave me uh, made me much better golfer. Uh, and a thanks to Bill Blazer, I, out of the kindness of his heart, I guess, to uh, offered me a scholarship to, to come play at Urbana University. Uh, Kent Smith and, and Bill Blazer came and uh, recruited Miles and I, and I remember that to, to this day, uh, sitting at a pizza hut in London. And uh, I, I was so excited that uh, uh, to be able to play golf at college, and I, and I owe that all pretty much to Miles Nixon. Um, after after the, uh, the days in London, um, I became a teammate of Miles at Urbana University. Uh, when we came here, I would say the golf was um, on, on the up and up, but it was still pretty much an extracurricular activity. Um, but Miles, uh, Miles uh, transformed the golf program uh, into a competitive athletic program. Uh, he was an extraordinary golfer, a great teammate, a great leader, um, but also one of the best friends you could ever ask for. His accomplishments at Urbana were numerous. He was a three-time team captain, three-time All-American, lowest single, single round score, uh, and lowest uh, scoring average in a year. Uh, during his senior season at Urbana, he led uh, Urbana to a 92-6 record, uh, never been accomplished by any other team sport of any university history. Uh, I was talking to some of the former teammates and asking for stories, and one of them came out that we were, I, I think it may have been after I had left Urbana, but he was telling me, and I thought, I thought it'd be a good story to tell. It was after a match one day, and we, they were going to uh, eat lunch at a Dirt Dutchman in, in Plain City. And uh, Coach Blazer said, you guys need to take off your hat at, hats at the table. And Miles refused, as stubborn as he is, said, my hair's messed up. <laughs> so Blazer said, if you're not going to take off your hat, you're going to go sit in the van. So Miles, as stubborn as he is, went and sat in the van. Except he didn't sit and took the van and drove it to Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, as if we had a plate all back today, Miles, your hair wouldn't be messed up anymore. Uh, since graduating uh, at Urbana, Miles has went on, like uh, David said, to become, uh, be very successful. He had a, a stint as a caddy with uh, Bernie Kim, um, taking a relatively unknown PGA, or LPGA professional and leading her to the 2005 um, LPGA U.S. Open. Um, and has since went on to be a golf professional at a, at a very prestigious golf club in uh, Fort Myers, Florida. Miles has represented Urbana University well throughout the years after uh, attending university here. Uh, I remember uh, there, it was I may have been still during his university days carrying a bag at, at, when he won the um, U.S. Amateur Public Links, one of the most prestigious Amateur sporting events in golf, and we went down to San Antonio, Texas, uh, and I was caddying for him then, and Miles prepared as if we could have a blizzard, we could have a, you know, a monsoon, 
his bag at 160 degree temperature weighed about 95 pounds, but I was, I was still happy to do it, Miles. <laughs> Uh, I know that uh, being inducted to the Urbana University Hall of Fame is a great honor for you. I know that uh, your parents have always been proud of you growing up, and they would be uh, very happy and very honored and proud of you today. So with that, I'd just like to congratulate you, Miles, uh, on your induction to the Hall of Fame. I do want to correct him on something. Uh, <laughs> yes, my, my hair was actually looking pretty good that day. But I, I just, uh, I don't know. Anyways, um, I, I did not finish as a three time all American. That's something he said. I was a three time all conference. So I, I want to straighten that up. I don't want to take credit for something I didn't do. But um, Scott, thank you for driving from North Carolina. That's you know, your real friend. You know, I love you, buddy. I didn't know what to expect coming here today. I didn't know who would be here. Um, this is this is all so so crazy to me. Um, I've got people that, that I grew up on the same street with, the Willard family, the Cooper family, and these guys that I consider to be family to me. I've got um, I've got my old fancy football league here. <laughs> And I do carry my fancy football all things be with me if you guys want to hear it. <laughs> so came up. Um, Kevin Howard is here. Now Kevin, are you here because I owe you $40? Or are you here because you like it? $40. I figured. I figured. Um, one of my old high school basketball coaches, Coach Darren Long is here. Uh, Karen, Darren, I've known you for a long time. You're a great guy. Uh, one thing I know about is, is that he scored 44 points in a high school basketball game, right? 12 of those shots would have been behind the three-point line if they had a three-point line at that time. Am I correct? You told me that story a million times. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's true. So we know two things about him. One, that he's a pretty good basketball player, maybe. And two, that you're getting old. Because that three-point line, I always remember that video. Right. Uh, Coach Blazer, um, you mean a lot to me. You are actually the only coach to recruit me to play college golf. I can remember you walking in to my house, sitting down with me, telling me why Urbana was, was the right fit for me, and you were 100% right. It was the right fit for me. And I appreciate you believing in me. And I use that as motivation every time we went to a tournament. Every time we went to a tournament, I use that as motivation because I knew I was good enough, but nobody ever believed in me but you. So I really appreciate that. And also for keeping me in line for four years. I did a big job. Um, to some of the guys that are, that are on the team, Bill Radford, Craig Burgraff, Scott Tremaine, uh, some of the guys that aren't here, Brian Robbins, some of the guys in the, in the later part of the years. Um, Tremaine mentioned that we, we went, Scott mentioned that we went 92 uh, and 6 our senior year, and uh, the guys our senior year really pushed me to play better. And there was a lot of reason that I'm here because they were actually, they were very good players, and we actually had a chance to, to be a great team. And I can remember going to Malone Invitational, where Malone had 13 teams there. I think 12 of them were ranked. And we were the only unranked team. And this was the first match of the year. And, and we went in there and finished second and beat Malone, which was always a national champion or a top five team in, in the country. So I knew from there we had, we had a great team. And those guys really pushed me, so I really appreciate that. I want to thank the future mayor of London, Ohio, and his wife. I know you guys pushed pretty hard for me to get into the, to the Urbana Athletic Hall of Fame, and I, and I really appreciate that. It means a lot to me that you stepped up. Thank you, Pat. I bet you never expected that, right? <laughs> All right. Um, I'd like to thank my in-laws for always supporting me. You guys have always been great to me, and I really appreciate that. My sister and her family, and you know, two new additions. Thank you, Candy. Now you're going to look at me, huh? <laughs> 
to my wife and my two lovely daughters, Reese and Lainey. I can't tell you what you have done for me, how much you have changed my life. I cannot tell you how much I love you all. Okay? I love you. All right. Where did they go? I don't even see them. I don't see this. But um, after college, uh, they mentioned that, that I did try to, I actually tried to play professional golf for a ago. It lasted about a half a year. I ran out of money. I don't even know if it lasted that long. I ran out of money pretty quick. So I became an assistant golf professional. From there, I was fortunate enough to meet a guy by the name of Kyle Bosco, who's actually a Miami and Ohio University Hall of Famer and a time all American. I got to play with him quite a bit, and he tried to make him on tour, so I, so I tried to catch him for him, and it didn't quite work out, but he hooked me up with a girl by the name of Birdie Kim. And Birdie is a lot of the reason why I'm here. She won the 2005 Women's US Championship with one of the greatest shots of all time in golf, and I was a part of that. I'm very proud of that moment. However, caddying, as fun as it was, was not for me. I wanted something more than that. I wanted my family. I wanted, I wanted to be around April. I wanted a future son, a future daughter, so I couldn't spend all my time, 30 weeks a year, out caddying. So I decided to come, come home, talk her in, and move to Fort Myers, Florida, so I could still be around and off and play. And we did. We, she found a job in Fort Myers. I moved to Fort Myers. And now I currently work at Crown Colony Country Club, where I'm the first assistant golf professional, where I get lessons and run golf tournaments. This has been a blessing, and I'm extremely proud of this. I do have one more thing to say. What, Mr. Blazer, the guy sitting next to you, what was your name? This one. Les Baum. Les Baum. I met a guy last week. I, I, I apologize, I don't, I don't know you. But I met a guy last week that was a wrestling referee. I told him I was coming up here to be inducted into the University Athletic Hall of Fame. He said, do you know Les Baum? He said he was crazy. Same <laughs> guy. He said you were, you were such a character. He said he loved every minute of it. He, he, he was uh, refereeing the matches. He said he kicked you out of the matches more than any other coach. That's it, I swear. This is last week. So he kicked you out of the match. He said you were such a character. It stuck my mind when he mentioned your name. So I apologize. But, but um, as Scott mentioned, he did say that, that my parents would be very proud of me. And I'll, I'll tell you this that, that I, every day I think of them, and I really wish they could see this moment. Because I'm very proud of this moment, and I know they would be too. But thank you guys very much.